Hello and welcome to this segment of the video series where we will be discussing ideation or concept generation. After we've defined our problem to be solved and established our design requirements for, uh, for, for solving it, uh, the next step is to actually start thinking of ideas for solutions to solve that problem by meeting those requirements. Let me lead off with a cautionary note here. So just like it was important uh, during the problem definition and uh, requirement stages to not be too quick to jump ahead, and in that case, jumping ahead would have been starting to think of solutions. Uh, likewise here, uh, when we're first starting to think of ideas for solutions, we need to not be too quick to start judging those ideas. There will indeed come a time for that, uh, notably when we get to concept evaluation, which will be discussed in a subsequent segment. And to some extent, even during the ideation process in, in a more informal way, as we uh, at some point have to make some judgments on the fly as to uh, which ideas to flesh out further and, and so on. But before any of that, which can all be uh, considered forms of convergence or convergent thinking, uh, we first need to spend uh, at least some time without any filter, uh, which is essential for what's known as divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is actually a principle of many fields that utilize creative problem solving. Uh, the concept of divergent thinking is basically to seek numerous ideas that are each as different from each other as possible. Uh, with this, we should intentionally allow ourselves space to tentatively entertain ideas that may seem or even truly be absurd. Now, the point of that is not necessarily uh, that we believe um, the most absurd ideas are uh, going to prove viable, although that can happen. Uh, rather, the main reason why we give ourselves a uh, license to temporarily venture into the realm of the ridiculous uh, is because it can unlock uh, mental blocks that we may not understand or, or even be aware of. Uh, and uh, by doing that, facilitate um, conception of more viable options. Uh, I like this quote from uh, Thomas F. Hansen uh, in that regard. The purpose of uninhibited brainstorming is not necessarily to find a solution, but to break up established thought patterns that may be inhibiting creativity. Okay, so how do we come up with the ideas for our solutions? Well, there are many conventional approaches to brainstorming. Uh, a simple internet search will turn up several. And uh, many such approaches are useful in various engineering fields as well as in business and other fields uh, that involve creative problem solving. These general approaches can help facilitate a mindset and an environment for, uh, for creativity. Um, some are uh, some are useful for individuals, some are more suited for team sessions, uh, some give you ideas for how to organize your sessions in terms of whether you're uh, uh, using words or sketches or taking turns and how organized the session is. There are also some approaches to ideation uh, that aim to provide some actual guidance in terms of the possible design ideas themselves. And people differ in how useful or helpful they find uh, those sorts of methodical or guided approaches to ideation. Um, 
A particularly prominent one is known as TRIZ, uh, T-R-I-Z, uh, and that itself has many aspects to it. Um, we're not gonna get into that uh, now, but that could be worth looking into. Also, in between those sort of uh, well-defined guided approaches and the purely open, uh, unguided approaches, um, it are sort of uh, some general heuristical principles that can be useful to keep in mind uh, or to, um, to consider in a general way. Uh, these can include things like thinking analogously or looking to inspiration from nature. Uh, so there's, there's not a whole lot of specific guidance more than that in, in, those, in those principles, but they can still be useful and there's others like that as well. Another topic I want to introduce in this uh, lesson is morphological analysis. Uh, morphological analysis is a tool that can often uh, be helpful to direct our ideation uh, as well as to organize our ideation, uh, particularly for functional requirements and particularly for um, projects uh, where we're designing something with significant complexity. Basically, for each function uh, and possibly each subfunction, we think of various alternative possible means for how to achieve that function. At this point, we're trying to think of each function or subfunction on its own. So don't worry about whether a given means for one function would necessarily be compatible with any given means for another function. So we put all these partial solutions in a grid and we have a tool known as a morphological chart or morph chart that can help us in selecting a combination of means that can be aggregated into a cohesive overall concept, <clears throat> which we can then call a design concept candidate. Of course, when we actually go to choose which combinations of those partial solutions to put together for our overall design concept candidates, um, we will then need to consider how well the respective means would work together. Also, note that morph charts will usually have hundreds, if not thousands, of potential candidates inherent in them. For example, a 4x4 morph chart, which uh, would have four functions and four possible means for each function, uh, would imply 256 overall design concept candidates inherent in that morph chart because four possible means uh, for achieving the first function times four possible means for achieving the second function times four possible means for achieving the third function times four possible means for achieving the fourth function. Uh, but First of all, keep in mind, there's no rule that you have to have the same po number of possible options uh, for each function. That's just a hypothetical example. Uh, secondly, uh, keep in mind that many, if not the vast majority of those possible overall candidates may be readily infeasible. Uh, they may not even be worth um, giving serious thought to. But even if uh, you could rule out 90, 95%, that could still leave several candidates uh, that are potentially viable. Some of those may be more closely related to each other than others. Some, some may have three functions in common and, uh, and only differ on the fourth function. Others may uh, involve different means for every function and, and various possibilities in between. But the point is uh, when selecting possible combinations of partial solutions to get an overall concept candidate, uh, we do need to consider the totality of the, uh, the hypothetical concept and, and how well different means uh, would work together if chosen. And what I'm talking about here in terms of um, uh, thinking about which 
of the hundreds or thousands of possible uh, candidates uh, are worth further consideration, uh, this gets into some of that uh, informal, on-the-fly types of judgments that I talked about earlier that, that does become necessary even within the ideation process as a practical matter. And then in a more structured way, uh, when you get to concept evaluation, which in most cases is a necessary step uh, before uh, going further in the development of a concept. And by the way, uh, that subsequent development that we'll get to, um, uh, which can include often uh, detailed design and prototyping, uh, as well as um, these aspects of ideation where you're coming up with an overall, uh, one or more overall design concept candidates, those are all uh, known as the synthesis aspects of the engineering design process. And so in our next segment, uh, we're gonna kind of continue talking about the synthesis. Um, so we'll pick up next time talking about uh, uh, further development of these, whatever concept or concepts you choose to develop further. Um, and then we're going to back up and talk about evaluation. And the first kind of evaluation we're gonna talk about is concept evaluation. So it's a bit out of sequence because I'm grouping the synthesis aspects together, uh, but just keep in mind that in most cases, uh, between coming up with concept candidates and developing one or more of those concepts further, such as through detailed design and prototyping, there will usually be some structured form of concept evaluation inserted between there. So uh, see you next time when we'll discuss uh, further development of your chosen concept candidates.